What's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Game Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode 20, where we are continuing our Eve Gilly mission. That is something that we got in the contracts. A simple pass by of Eve and the standard exploration mission for Gilly. So, we have our craft landed down in a rather peculiar position, and if you recall during the previous episode, we were slipping down this very steep slope, and I was trying to find a way to make my craft stop moving. So, this is kind of how we worked it out. And it looks like my Kerbal's having a little trouble standing up here on Gilly. Of course, Gilly is a very, very small body with a very little mass, so it's kind of hard to... Uh, move around in the standard fashion on this little moon. All right, so planting my flag, and as I expressed in the previous episode, I'm renaming my flags in a different convention so that I'm aware of the different biomes and stuff. There was a suggestion in the comment to use the um, Alt F12 that opens up the debug menu, and apparently you can see the different biomes on the different bodies, but that is a little cheat-like, so I'm not going to be doing that. Um, anything involved opening the debug menu uh, would be too cheaty for the stock series of this um, this particular series. So anyways, so now that we've got uh, our EVA report and collected our surface sample, and it looks like opening that bay popped our craft up. Man, it's just so crazy how lightweight things can be on Gilly. Uh, we are going to go ahead and start collecting science. And uh-oh, looks like we actually are on the wrong side of our craft. And we have to flip around. So I'm going to have to close the other two solar panels and flip my craft around. Hopefully that doesn't get me sliding down this uh, high incline again. Otherwise, I may have to consider repositioning my craft, but yeah, it's 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 kind of tough on this one because it's like <sighs> the craft may have a hard time determining if we are in fact floating above the surface or if we are in fact landed down and I want the science packages to collect the landed down science because that typically is worth a lot more and well, pretty much what I figured was going to happen, happened. So we flipped around and now we are just kind of cruising down here and I have to figure out a way to make my craft stop from moving. So I'm trying all kinds of stuff, rotating it around, that kind of thing. Redeploying my landing gear, which seems to have worked. Thank goodness. And again, probably going to possibly slide into one of those rocks. And as I was talking about in the previous episode, I wish those rocks actually had a physical kind of uh, ID map or something so that when you bumped into them you would actually uh, it would affect your craft but nope you just pass right through anyways collecting some more valuable science and now I'm going to go ahead and actually take my Kerbal and fly him over to see if I can find a different biome uh, which should be not too difficult to do on this particular moon uh, because your Kerbal can easily, easily get themselves in a ejection <laughs> orbit uh, just using the standard RCS packs on your Kerbal, which is crazy, crazy. Uh, it does not take much speed. I think it's just above 20 and you can actually get uh, an ejection out of Gilly. So we, we have to be a little bit careful. So double check there, there was uh, no, um, yeah, see, this is how it works. It's a good thing I showed that there. So um, just cruising along here, and uh, that last spot did not give us a different uh, location. But I suspect that this will be a different location because it's closer to the polar region, and usually you get, uh, yeah, so these are considered highlands. We were in, what was it, the lowlands? So now we can go ahead and collect another surface sample, which is worth 250, 40 science. Yeah, that's a ton. Just going to mark this area again, just real quick, Highlands. And yeah. So again, this, this mission is actually going to bring back a ton of science, which is fantastic. 
And now I'm kind of at a point where I'm not sure what I'm going to be unlocking in the tech tree because I have largely been ignoring a lot of things in the tech tree, uh, specifically the space plane stuff. I haven't really played around with the probe stuff, the ion engines, that kind of thing. I could unlock the highest tier of the resource system that gives us that scanner that will give us uh, a really good idea of where the 10% locations are. That's always something I can do. And then I might as well just go ahead and get the LVN engine, even though you know, I complained about that engine to no end. It still is probably the most efficient engine in Kerbal Space Program. Then we got the top tier big daddy engine uh, that's a thousand science to unlock. So that's something we can take a look at. All right, anyways, we've uh, collected our science here on Gilly. And instead of doing the standard burnout at like 90 degrees and doing the incline, I'm just burning straight out of Gilly. Because once again, you cannot speed up time until you hit that 8,000 meter marker. It's like one of those only places in the, uh, the game where uh, you cannot time accelerate. And here is where I thought I'd made a mistake. So I was, uh, you know, looking through and I was thinking, oh crap, you know what? I, I forgot to get myself into a stable orbit around Gilly. So uh, I was worried that <laughs> I messed up the contract. Uh, but here, like you can see, I'm like setting up my, my orbit for Kerbin. But uh, I do at some point realize that uh, I, I had forgotten to get into a stable orbit because I actually didn't i just did a direct burn towards gilly once i i slowed down and i didn't get into that stable orbit so here i'm i'm checking i'm like oh crap i didn't do that and i don't know if that was actually required in the contracts but i had to make sure so um i wasted a little bit of delta v <laughs> and had to get myself back into an orbit around gilly um i was so irritated about this but i'm like ah well you know i did it um, Got to keep the mission rolling. So, yep, trying to find <laughs> stable orbit again around Gilly. Shouldn't be too much of a problem because I'm in the same inclination and I'm just like just slightly outer. And I'm, you know, you can see here I'm zoning in with uh, maneuver nodes. So I just got to do a teeny tiny slight little burn. No big deal. Get myself back into a uh, stable orbit around Gilly. And then I will try to get back to Kerbin. Um, I still have a ton of fuel. I mean, it didn't really require all that much to, to do this because I just did a small, tiny little burn. So here I am. <laughs> if, I didn't, if I didn't bring this up, you'd be like, what, what the crap are you doing, OpDX? So, yeah, some weird, some weird stuff going on there. Yeah, Gilly, when you um, when you use the uh, auto features on the, um, the craft... Like for example, auto prograde and that that sort of thing. Like the the orbit line was like just wiggly, 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 wiggly. Anyways, there we go. I got myself into a stable orbit. I did not notice um, that I got the indication that I was in fact in a stable orbit. So I was worried that maybe I was too high. So what I did is got closer to Gilly, put myself into a stable orbit. I was just just making sure. I'm like, man, I need to complete that contract. And I double checked the contracts. It uh, looked like I had completed everything that I needed to, and yeah, so I wasn't getting that that flash, so I'm like, oh crap, I just wasted a whole bunch of time. Thank goodness for me accelerating time on some of these episodes, because holy crap, that would have just been brutal, brutal for you guys to watch that uh, in real time. Anyway, with that out of the way, it's now time to go ahead and get myself set back up to get a capture with Kerbin. It didn't matter anyways because I had a lot of time acceleration to do anyways because I wasn't in a good position to do a capture on Kerbin. So I've got to kind of set up a similar approach that I would do for Duna, maybe just a little bit closer. And the idea here is to try to just save as much fuel as possible. So there are certain degrees and angles that 
uh, you can they're available on the internet that you can get to like see what the the most optimal approach is. I don't really like doing that. I never like citing external sources to have to play a game, so I typically won't do that. And but like I, I'm pretty much going by memory at this point. I mean, Duna is roughly like a 45 degree angle from Kerbin, uh, and you can get a good approach here. Here I'm just rough guessing here because. Eve is closer to Kerbin, so uh, I figured if I do just slightly less than a 45 degree angle to Kerbin, then I should be able to nail an approach out. And there we go, it got my capture inside of the Eve system, which is fantastic. Just saves a lot of fuel. And you're still, no matter what, on the uh, approach, going to have to do the correction burns. And here I'm just uh, snapping off a few more of my science gear. I probably should have spent all of it, all of it at uh, Gilly. <laughs> Especially considered I returned to Gilly to do the orbit. I could have used that Delta V to fly over to the other biome that I found and, and fired off my um, research packages, which I did not do. So I actually could have collected uh, a considerable amount more of science than I did uh, on this mission, but still, I probably got a freaking metro crap ton. And so, for my approach on Kerbin, I don't really care where it is. All I need to do is make sure that I'm not going too fast and that uh, I'm going to aero break inside of the atmosphere. So, uh, it's not really important. Um, the only thing that's relevant is if I land too far away from the launch center, it's going to be more expensive. And I'll lose a lot of the, the actual value of the craft. Because like I said before, the top of this craft is worth roughly almost 100,000 credits money in this game. So too far away from the launch center, I won't get a lot of the value back. But that's okay, because we made a ton of money on this mission. And as you can see, I still have a good chunk of fuel left. So my interplanetary launcher for my science package is very successful. You can see I still have... Three engines with, you know, three fuel tanks there. The, the other ones are just about to burn off. And my approach speed to Kerbin from EVE is not so bad. It's not not nearly as bad as the approach from Kerbin to EVE where you're heading about 4,000 meters per second. Once again, I almost did an oops where I had forgotten to detach my thrusters and... Um, <laughs> maybe almost got into trouble here. Now, something I found interesting about this is I've done this approach already a million times to Kerbin, and it looked like my solar panels were heating up far more than they had previously. So I was like, what in the... What is going on here? I was kind of worried that my craft was going to take some damage during this approach. I mean, even my... my something down here it looks like... Um, oh, it's the strut. The strut was actually heating up there. Um, so I was like, man, what is, what is going on here? Because, my yeah, my approach wasn't too crazy. I even slowed down. I mean, it was less than a Mooner approach. It's less than a Minmus approach. And, you know, I, I really kind of expect more that the lights would take damage than uh, the solar panels because they're tucked in a little bit more and it's kind of covered by the lander cans and all that. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, man, but it's fine. And another habit I'm kind of starting to pick up here is just right-clicking on my parachute. And um, I don't know. Was there like a tweak? Was there a tweak in like after 1.04? Because I remember having to deploy at about 2,000. And now like it looks like at 10,000, the parachute says it's safe to deploy, which is interesting. I thought maybe, well, you know, it's in the dark and I can't see what's going on here. Maybe... I'm above a mountainous region, and it's just kind of warning me. But no, like as I got closer to the curve, and I could see that it was the water. I still deployed the parachutes a little bit early just to be safe because you really can't see your approach at all. Um, that's why, you know, maybe they need to add one more part to the game, uh, like thermal imaging or some kind of imaging system or green, green imaging so that when you're landing down, because this game gets really dark, it's really, really dark. So when you're landing down, you can actually enable like the thermal imaging or whatever, or the green imaging. I don't know what it's what it's called. Uh, 
<laughs> whatever. So you can actually see what's going on. I think that would be a good part to add to the game. I don't know if there's actually a mod that does that, but uh, that's that's something that would be really good for this game. Because, yeah, again, it gets it gets really dark. Another thing I like to do is when I land down this craft, I like to enable my SAS. Because you remember my first landing with this craft, uh, it damaged the crap out of the top of the, the craft. And I have those two science packages. So, yeah. Made a good chunk of science. We have like 2,800 science plus. That's good. Uh, yeah, so landed too far away from the launch center. So I only got like a quarter of the value back of this craft, which is quite unfortunate. My Kerbals gained a ton of experience from this mission. Uh, my other scientists leveled up a lot. That is definitely a really good thing. So just like standard uh, standard mission ending, just looking through all the stuff that uh, I made here. Lots and lots of cash money credits, good stuff here. And it looks like I completed those contracts. Just looking at the contracts again real quick to see what is in here after doing a mission like that. We got like three three stars. So we got a looks like a mission to Jewel, mission to Bop, a couple other things going on here. So... I don't know what may happen because I'm probably during the next episode going to open up the tech tree and start uh, spending some of that science. Again, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do as I described earlier in the episode. Probably the LV-909, probably the top tier science package. Uh, the docking port senior I want for the space station, for the mining. And those are the major things I want. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.